Cities around the world increasingly face the adverse effects of climate change, rising temperatures and sea levels, longer periods of drought and stronger storms. Combining these phenomena with increasing urbanisation and the fact that most cities have large areas of impermeable surfaces, the need to rethink urban development is clear. An integrated approach to climate change adaptation, urban development and urban water management reduces social, environmental and economic costs caused by climate change and allows rainwater to be used as a resource. Denmark is no stranger to ever heavier, ever frequent rainfalls and Danish cities such as Milfart, Ulmse, Vibor and Copenhagen, to name a few, have planned and adopted integrated ways to climate change adaptation, building new green areas, creating livable and climate resilient cities. In July 2011, the heaviest rainfall known to date in Denmark arrived on a summer's day in Copenhagen, resulting in almost city-wide floods as sewers were at capacity and the rainwater had nowhere to go, which resulted in damages of up to 1 billion euros. Here you can see the flooding on Vesterbrogel in 2011. Post the 2011 flooding, the city of Copenhagen developed a cloudburst management plan the plan designates seven water catchment areas in the city and has resulted in a catalogue of approximately 300 public service projects to be implemented across the city. Prioritising of the projects considers a number of factors such as hydraulic aspects in establishing the sequence of projects, identifying flood risk areas and if there's other construction work planned to enable synergies with urban development. This map, for instance, shows the economic risks related to flooding in the various parts of the city. All the coloured squares on the map represent areas of concern. The warmer the colour, the greater the economic cost will be in case that area floods, with red indicating the highest economic cost. Come join us as we tour four implemented climate change adaptation projects around the city of Copenhagen. Welcome to Copenhagen's first climate resilient neighbourhood. As the area is sitting on an incline, sloping down towards the harbour, the main purpose is to retain surface water in the area and infiltrate as much rainwater to the groundwater as possible. This is Tosinga Square, a green pocket park with lowered basins that can handle three different types of rainwater fractions. Rainwater from roofs for recreational use and play, rainwater from zero traffic areas for local infiltration and surface water from roads infiltrated through a filter and led to the nearby harbour. Around the corner we find Bruggevangen and St Kells Square where green spaces, urban nature and linked surface water solutions have replaced asphalt and pavements. Around 30% of the rainwater is handled by the green areas on the surface and the access is led to the harbour. Surface water from the roads is handled by first flush solutions, directing the polluted initial surface runoff from heavy rainfall to the existing sewer system, whereas the cleaner second flush is directed to green surface water solutions. This can be turned off in the winter to avoid salt intrusion into the green areas. If you look below, you can see a park in Scandiagel that was actually constructed as an innovative cloudburst project. Today, Scandiagel is able to handle heavy volumes of rainwater as well as function as a recreational park for the local residents. It now has a central reserve and the area around the old lime trees has been transformed into an urban space with eight basins. The basins are able to hold 1,500 cubic metres of rainwater when it rains, the basins delay the rainwater and this subsequently prevents the nearby sewers from overflowing. Let's go down and take a closer look. You are now standing in one of the eight basins. When it is dry, the basin's hilly landscape hosts a number of activities, such as an adventure playground, butterfly garden, a free-growing experimental garden and urban kitchen gardens, as per the residents' ideas. Let's visit the harbour area now. The first swimming facility in the Copenhagen Harbour area opened in 1785 and throughout the years many more were established. However, in 1954, the pollution level had increased and led to a ban on all harbour swimming activities. 
The band lasted until 2002, when the opening of the current Harbour Bath was made possible through improved wastewater management and the city's efforts to mitigate combined sewer overflows. Twelve underground detention structures have been established and during cloudbursts, when capacity becomes limited in the sewer system, the wastewater is stored in the large detention structures. This helps to keep the harbour water clean and less affected by overflow. Today, more than 100,000 people enjoy a swim in one of the city's swimming facilities each year. And the area along the city's inner harbour is now one of the trendiest spots in the city and property values have more than doubled. Let's take a look at what underground rainwater storage could look like. Here we are, six metres below the ground, where the local utility is finalising one of Copenhagen's newest cloudburst tunnels. The tunnel is approximately 1,100 metres long and two metres in diameter, and it will provide protection from cloudbursts for up to 33,000 citizens in the area. Rainwater will be collected from all over the neighbourhood and released back into the sewer when the rain has stopped and sewer capacity allows for it. Only with heavier cloudburst events will the rainwater be led out into the harbour, securing the area against the costly damages of a flood. Once the tunnel is completed, the city of Copenhagen will create a green park space above the ground, where approximately 2,000 cubic metres of rainwater can be delayed and infiltrated. The green space will improve biodiversity and also help reduce heat accumulation in the summertime. Our last stop is along the Inner Harbour at St. N.A. Square, a historical area of Copenhagen with buildings dating back to the 1700s. The square was remodelled to lead rainwater away from the historical buildings and into the middle green area where pipes collect the rainwater. Thank you for listening in on how Denmark's integrated approach to climate change adaptation, urban development and urban water management has led to greener, more livable cities. We will leave you here to enjoy a final view of the Copenhagen Harbour.